Welcome to this session. This is the second session on kinematics of a particle moving a straight line or in a plane. So in this session, we are going to discuss uh, the general equations which governs projectile motion. So general equations. So general equations which govern projectile motion. So assume that the particle is projected from particles projected from the origin with speed u at an angle alpha to the horizontal. And the only force acting on the particle is the force of gravity. It is always good manners uh, when you want to derive anything in mathematics to state all the conditions or how you want to describe the derivation. So this information is very key to helping us understand how we're going to get the equations. So uh, let the motion be as shown below. So let this be the vertical axis, this is the horizontal axis. And then So this is the projected. So this is a point of projection. And we have the initial velocity u. And then this angle here is alpha. So this is what we'll be calling the maximum height. So let's call it H. So at this point here, there is no vertical velocity. I refer to this point here, I have the maximum height. And then this distance from this point, this point, uh, let's call this point P, let's call this point O. We call it the range. So let's show it by R. 
and then at this point, y is zero and x is equals to this quantity we are calling the range r. So as usual, force of gravity is acting downwards, but then when the body is moving upwards, then acceleration is minus g. So that one should be clear. So the blue curve is the path or the trajectory where the particle is moving along. So at this initial point of the displacement or the distance covered by the object is zero because there's no motion that has already been started. So we say initial position both x and y is zero. So no distance and no displacement has been covered. And then velocity. So remember there are two, these are two D motion. There's vertical motion and then there's horizontal motion. So when you are, whenever you are describing this values for position, velocity, acceleration, you should always be considering those two cases, both vertical and horizontal. So velocity, so we have horizontal, now, so we have, this was the speed or the velocity of projection. So the velocity component at the start, we simply draw a right angle triangle here. So we're interested in this component here. So let's call this one ux and then this one uy. Uh, UY. So using Oshachota, then this ux is adjacent with respect to this angle and then this is u so cosine of alpha is this adjacent which is ux over the hypotenuse which is u so it tells us that ux equals to u cos alpha and sine which is given by opposite of hypotenuse is uh, sine of alpha is opposite is uy hypotenuse is u so it tells us that u y will be given by u sine alpha so therefore we specify horizontal component of the velocity will be u x will be given by u plus alpha and then u y will be given by u sine alpha So horizontal, so actually let me let me describe this one as the initial component of the velocity. So initial velocities are given by this one. So this is horizontal component and this is the vertical. component. Now, so let's say how we define final velocity. So final, remember from the equation of linear motion, the three equations we had v is given by u plus 80 and then we have s is given by ut plus a half 
at squared and then v squared is given by u squared plus two as so these equations are going to help us to describe the motion of this projectile so v x so using the first equation will be given by u x plus a t or a x t and v y will be given by u y plus a y then times time remember that acceleration horizontal acceleration is zero vertical acceleration is gravity but because we are moving upward then the acceleration will be negative g so note that acceleration horizontal acceleration is zero and then vertical acceleration is negative g because this particle is moving upwards remember gravity is acting downwards so this equation will be the same as ux and then plus this one is zero times t so this is the same as ux and then this will be the same as uy plus minus g t so which is the same as uy minus g t so that now the final velocity vx will be given by ux which is the same as u cos alpha and then vy will be given by ui is u sine alpha and then minus gt we can actually number our equations let's call this question one let's call this one question two let's call this one question three let's call this one question four so those are the velocity components initial velocity components and the final velocity components using this first equation of linear motion so then now let's see now position position so remember position is given by s so horizontal position horizontal position will be given by x equals to so where this s we put x u sub x t plus a half a x t squared and then vertical position that's motion along the y will be y equals to u y t plus a half a y t and this is t squared so that's by definition uh, because we already have the ax we have ux ui ay then this implies that our horizontal position so horizontal position will be x equals to ux from our calculation is given by equation one u cos alpha so u cos alpha 
then you multiply by t plus acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero so we'll have a half times zero t squared so this will give us x equals to u t cosine of alpha and vertical position will be given by y equals to u y is u sine alpha and then multiply by t plus a half and then a y or the acceleration in the vertical direction is negative g so we have a half negative g times t squared so this will give us y equals to ut sine of alpha n minus a half g t squared now let's call this horizontal position let's call this one equation five and let's call this one equation six so that's those are the horizontal and the vertical positions now there's what you call maximum height So maximum height from our diagram is this value of h. So how do we define this h? So then vertical height means so at its greatest height or maximum height. The vertical component of velocity is zero. So at this point here, at this point here, the vertical position of the velocity is zero. So because we know the vertical position of the vertical component of the velocity is given by this equation number number four. Then you simply equate this one to zero to get uh, the time. So uh, simply, so I e equation four equate zero equation four this is to say that zero or simply v y equals to zero so v y equals to zero it means that zero equals to u sine alpha minus gt so it tells us that gt is given by u sine alpha and we make t the subject so t will be u sine alpha over g so therefore using this new value this value of t in equation so equation describing the vertical distance or motion is equation six we have y equals to u times t so t is u sine alpha divided by g 
and then times sine of alpha, and then minus a half g times t squared, which is u sine alpha over g squared. So this will give us y equals to u and then sine squared. So this will be u squared plus u by u, u squared, sine squared alpha over g minus a half g because one g will cancel this one here and then I have u squared sine squared alpha. So LCM is 2G. So this will have twice U squared sine squared alpha minus U squared sine squared alpha. And because these are like terms, so difference will give us just U squared sine squared alpha over 2G. Therefore, the greatest height is U squared sine squared alpha divided by 2G. That is capital H in our diagram is given by two uh, by u squared u squared sine squared alpha divided by two g. So this is the expression for maximum height. And then there's what you call time of flight. The time of flight. Now the time of flight is the time taken for the particle to move from its point of projection to the point where it strikes the horizontal plane. So time taken by the particle to move from its point of projection to the point where it strikes the horizontal plane. So this is what we call the time of flight. So to find time of flight. So the time taken for you to, from the starting point to where the particle will strike the horizontal plane. At this point, so time taken to move from point O to point P, you see at this point here at P, the horizontal displacement or the horizontal distance is zero. So the y value at P is zero. So we say when the projectile is on the ground or hits the ground, hits the ground, 
at point P from our diagram, then Y is zero. So which tells us that from the equation Y equals to UT sine alpha minus a half GT squared, this equation should be zero. So it tells us that UT sine alpha minus a half GT squared is zero. T is common in these two terms, so I can factor out T and I say U sine alpha minus a half GT equals to zero. So it tells us that T equals to zero. We ignore this one because it's a starting point. Or U sine alpha minus a half GT is zero. Now our index is to find the value of T. So this is the same as a half. GT, uh, GT equals to U sine alpha. So GT equals to two U sine alpha. And then to make T the subject it by through by G. So T equals to two U sine alpha divided by G. So this is a time of flight. Time of flight for the projectile is given by 2u sine alpha over g. So let's call this what we call maximum, high, uh, maximum height. Let's call this one equation seven. And let's call this one eight. Finally, uh, we have what you call the range. The range. Now the range is the distance from, the horizontal distance from O to P in our diagram but we can formally uh, define it as the horizontal distance from the point, from which the particle was projected actually in our case is O to the point where it strikes the horizontal plane. So, because we have seen that time of flight, time taken to, for the particle to move from the point of projection to the point where it strikes the ground is given by equation eight, eight, then we can always get the value of range. So it says since the range of the particle is the value, because we are dealing with the horizontal distance, so the value of x when t is given by 2u <coughs> sine alpha divided by g, then since x is given by from our calculation, x is ut sine cos alpha. These are the value that 
uh, this is the value we got at the horizontal displacement ut cos alpha so we have x will be u but where they still put 2u sine alpha divided by g <coughs> you multiply by cos of alpha and when you simplify this one you'll have x equals to 2u squared sine alpha cos alpha divided by g but from trigonometry two sine alpha cos alpha is the same as sine of two alpha and since this is the same thing as writing u squared into two sine alpha cos alpha over g then this part will be replaced by sine of two alpha then we have x equals to two i equals to now u squared then this is sine of two alpha so we'll have u squared sine two alpha divided by g so divided by g so this is the value we get as range so hence r is given by u squared sine 2 alpha divided by g so that is the range Let's call this one equation nine. Now our maximum range occurs when this value here sine of two alpha, because the value of sine of any angle can only be maximum at one. So it occurs when sine 12 pi equals to one, which means that two alpha is sine inverse of one and sine inverse of one is 90 degrees. So that means that two alpha equals to 90 degrees, which implies alpha equals to 45. So remember 90 degrees the same as pi over two so 45 is the same as pi over four. So therefore we can say range maximum is given by, so this formula for range is U squared So this, this should be one for this to be maximum. So it would just be u squared over g. Uh, whenever alpha is 45 degrees of pi over four. So this is a value of maximum, maximum range. So that's what we have. And then lastly, the equation of path of the projectile now. So 
So the equation of the path, that trajectory defined or followed by the projectile. So since, since we know that X is given by UT cos alpha, then this is the same thing as saying T is the same as X over U cos alpha. And also we know that Y is given by ut sine alpha minus a half gt squared. Then replacing this value of t in this equation, you'll have y equals to u times x over u cos alpha times sine of alpha minus a half g, while there's t we put x over u cosine of alpha and then square. So y will be u and u cancels out. So we'll have x sine alpha over cos alpha minus a half g x squared over u squared cos squared alpha. Which can be written as y equals to x sine alpha over cos alpha minus g over 2 u squared. So I can say x squared 1 over cos squared alpha. So which is y, sine over cos is term, minus g x squared over two u squared, one over cos squared is sec squared alpha. But you know from cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals to one, if I divide by cos squared alpha, cos squared alpha, cos squared alpha. So this would be one plus this is tan squared alpha equals to sec squared alpha. So I can replace this one by one plus tan squared alpha. And therefore I have y equals to x tan alpha minus g x squared over two u squared into one plus tan squared alpha. So this is the equation that describes the path of motion of the projectile given. So this is how we describe the motion of the projectile in general. Thank you.